Hi, there in Chicago, Mel here. The voice crying out from the wilderness of Malibu to lend that voice for your support and encouragement at your rally today. The Coalition for Canceled Priests. I mean, it's not hard to believe that there is now such a thing, as personally I know many priests uh, who have been canceled. But not for the reasons you'd think. I mean, it's not like they did a hit and run drive and left the scene of the crime or embezzled church funds, stole the altar wine or committed some other heinous crime. No, not at all. And who's persecuting them? Well, their own bishops. How's that? Yep. Who are they? Well, they're a pack of men who generally passively sit by and tolerate any kind of nonsense. But if one of their priests utters something that resembles orthodoxy, well, then they, they spring into action, they reprimand him, and they bully him and do their best to cancel him. And it succeed. They drum him out of the service, you know. Off he goes. Um, I'm really sorry about that. That's a grave injustice, and it's kind of white martyrdom. And it's nothing new. It really isn't. It's nothing new. Um, and it's a symptom. It's a symptom of a very deep sickness that afflicts the church. It did not happen overnight. Um, if anyone's familiar with the missives of Archbishop Vigano, he says that the, uh, you know, the seeds of erosion of the church were sown at, with the reforms of Vatican II, and I agree with him. He suggests even that we scrap the whole thing and go back and do it the way it was before. And it was a pastoral council, after all. I mean, uh, you know, uh, there was nothing wrong. It didn't need to be fixed. They were doing pretty well. At any rate, and, and you know, I've had my own run-in with the bishops. I mean, who are they? Well, they're... I, I remember when I directed The Passion, I, I went to the USCCB uh, to get support for the film. And um, those men couldn't get away from me fast enough. And all but a few of them turned their back on me. And it was, it was pretty telling about who they were. A pretty insipid bunch. And uh, it doesn't look like anything's changed. Geez, I remember back in the 70s, uh, old priests, good priests, who were uh, bullied and persecuted by their bishops. There was a rash of it back then also, and it was because they, you know, they wanted to maintain what it was that they were ordained to do. They didn't want to go along with the, the new liturgy and the reforms of Vatican II, and uh, so that they were... Uh, really heavily leaned on. It was never abrogated, the old mass. Never. And it still hasn't been. You can't. It's protected by quo primum. Um, but they were bullied and, and badgered and put in insane asylums. And, you know, it, it was pretty sad to watch. And uh, this kind of thing is now happening again. So... And how are we supposed to know the good guys from the bad guys? Well, we were given a standard by which to judge them. You know, by their fruits, you'll know them. By their fruits. Anybody seen any good fruit lately? Yeah, no. it's tough. And look, I'm a pretty sinful guy. I mean, I'm, I'm as venal as the next guy. But I know the difference between a shepherd and a hireling. And I think that the vast majority of these bishops are just a bunch of hirelings. You know, and my question is, you know, like, who's hiring them? I don't think it's Jesus. I, is it Francis? Who's hiring Francis? Is it, is it Pachamama? I mean, I think you need to look at the whole institution. And, uh, you know, I'll quote uh, Archbishop Vigano again in saying that uh, he believes that there was a parallel counterfeit church set up to eclipse the real one. He's suggesting usurpation or an inside job. It seems that way. Uh, anyway, um, of course, we know the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, the victory is God's, not ours. 
and uh, it will flourish if we keep it in our hearts. It can flourish in our hearts and keep the faith. And that's what's going to happen. That's what I encourage you to do. Again, I'm sorry for your for your pain, the injustice. Um, I'll definitely throw something in the hat um, to add my support. And uh, God keep you and God bless you. Thank you. Hola amigos, soy Vicente Ferrer de Pellicer, colaborador de Patricio Lons, consultor y empresario, uno de los organizadores de los foros de empresarios por la hispanidad. Hemos negociado 20 plazas para entrar en un grupo, el Elite Trade, dirigido por un gran trader de 27 años de experiencia de broker y trader, Edward Oms. Es una gran oportunidad para tener las herramientas de multiplicar exponencialmente, exponencialmente vuestros ahorros y vuestra oportunidad de independencia. Por ejemplo. Os esperamos, es una gran oportunidad, no os lo perdáis, informaros, de verdad. Un abrazo.